And welcome back to another episode of Don't Blame Me. Today, as we go through, our, is it is gamut a word? Yeah, like mm-hmm. the gamut the of gamut. Mm-hmm. the gals from Big Mood Podcast. Yeah, we have Tiffany here, and you're Hi. also a, a host for JK News, and you yes. have a family channel. Which um, you guys missed the great joke right before we started recording that <laughs> I want a family channel, and Melissa said. You got to get a family first. Hey, zinger, <laughs> painful, right in the ovaries. Well, are you married? Nope. <laughs> oh, I thought you would be, girl. You're such nope. a catch. Oh, my God. Thank you. I have a boyfriend, but oh, we're well, not. You guys have been together four years. So. I know. That's a family. I That's know. a family. I literally yesterday, I was like, are you going to like propose at some point? He was like, oh, yeah, for sure. And I was like, cool. Thanks so much. <laughs> Is he the one? Oh, yeah. We're gonna, we talk about it all the time. Aww. I constantly, like, I'll quiz him, like, in, like, quiet moments at our apartment. And I'll be like, what kind of, what, like, engagement ring do I want? And he's like, uh, uh, uh. And then, like, <laughs> list it off. I'm like, good call. But he, like, is now under this new thing. His friend proposed to his girlfriend. But he really wanted to be, like, a massive surprise, which also kind of almost backfired. Because he, like, really told her, like, yeah, I don't really, like, not into marriage and all that stuff. Uh-oh. And then she was like sad but then she was like you know what it's fine i really don't care and then she was like talking to me about it i'm like shit dude Uh-oh. he's like gonna propose in like a week that like, reminds me of like monica and chandler that's literally what it was like <laughs> yeah. he like went too far with the backtracking of it but he proposed with like a placeholder ring to really surprise her mm. and now that's what moss wants to do and i was like that's i can't get a good picture of i said yes with a placeholder right exactly <laughs> and he was like, you need the okay. engagement ring yeah <laughs> i was like i'll just try them on and he's like well that ruins the surprise i'm like well i don't want to be surprised that we're getting married <laughs> yeah. like i don't want to be like shocked like holy have you shit, heard of those what? weddings where like the bride doesn't even know like the girl doesn't even know she's about to get engaged and then this guy sets up an entire wedding with her family there and then so the moment she's engaged for like two seconds that's so mean i know like, let me have to you say no yeah <laughs> let me have the attention you dick did you ever did you watch did anyone watch uh the fashion ambitionist no. i think she was uh an instagram girl who used to work at goop and I say Instagram girl lightly because she wasn't an influencer. She just mm. was a girl with an Instagram who worked for Goop, who like really wanted to be a fashion blogger and had like old family money, like mm. went to the Hamptons, like love check fancy dresses. I already know exactly what she looks all like. All that shit. 100%. <laughs> She's white. Can you tell? Um, yeah. And she like got like a per- had a whole proposal. I say proposal in quotations. Um, because it got released later on that there was like a deck for the proposal and they pitched <laughs> oh, it to we all talked these about different that on brands. News. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was, that and story. apparently she got fired from uh, Goop. But I, did I don't not know if she know did. That part. I don't know if it's been confirmed yet. But the whole thing, and then and he did the same thing where like the whole engagement process, she like it ended up with them in Paris yeah. and then they got married. Oh, at the same time. Okay, that's a different story then. Because I don't remember her working at Goop or the married thing. I think but... it is the same girl, though. It just was like a, a week and a half long process. Wow. It took so long, and I watched every single fucking story. <laughs> you did? Yes. That was a oh lot of stories. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it was like she called it – Um, his name was Gabe – and it was there was something with Gabe in the hashtag and like he sent her to like essentially like a soul cycle class or a flywheel class. And I was like, bitch, if that's part of my engagement scavenger uh-uh. hunt, I'm fucking out. You need to make me. Yeah, I'm working out. I don't want to go like spin for this. <laughs> like you're a dick. True. <sighs> Um, this is an advice podcast. If you guys are new here, if you want to be on an upcoming episode, you can leave us a voicemail at 310-694-0976. And international listeners, you can send us an audio message at meganpodcast at gmail.com. So shall we give some advice? Let's do it. Mm, advice. I need advice. Sorry of my life. I just <laughs> dish it all out. I can't take it. <laughs> Hello, Megan. I'm 25 years old and I think I need help. I have this friend, she's a friend of my four years. She's actually actually a close friend. She is in arranged marriage. Uh, she's still engaged, but it's very common here. And she was fine with it, although I don't agree. But I supported her because she's my friend. She started... She, the whole thing started as she liked the guy and he's fun to be around with and whatever. Then fast forward to last month, she told me that she views him as a friend. And it was like a red flag for me, but I didn't say anything about it. She was fine with getting married to him. So I didn't want to interfere. After that, the last 
five days, she told me that um, they were getting married. So she told me in a period of 10 days. And I was really shocked because no one decided they're getting married in next week or whatever. So I was surprised. Then I asked her what's going on. She told me that her fiancé decided the time of the wedding and she didn't have any part of it, which is really weird. And it bothered me, but sometimes um, I'm that friend that I want to support my friends and love them no matter what. I don't want to judge her with her choices. She's an adult. She's 26, so she's, I think, in her right mind to decide these decisions until she told me that I'm not allowed to come to her wedding, which is really upset me because she, I viewed her as like a best friend and a close friend for years and we've been through a lot. So I think I need help with that because I don't know if, if he's abusive or he's controlling or I know he doesn't like me, but maybe that's that. Please give me help. Mm, Holy shit. Girl. Yeah. Wow. That's so much. Yeah, that's Being a lot. Being like, yeah, we're just friends, but we're getting married in 10 days. By the way, you can't come. Yeah. And then it's an arranged marriage, yeah. which apparently is common where she's yeah. from. Damn, that's intense. Because I get, I could hear it in her voice how hurt she is as a friend. Because yeah. she's like, she cares so much about her friend and she's trying to, trying to be there for her. But she's also giving her her space. It's a tough place to be. Yeah. And I mean, I, I don't have a ton of, I mean, I have no personal experience with arranged marriages. But from my understanding... The arrangement comes from usually your parents mm -hmm. are arranging it for you. And so I think like at the end of the day, as much as it sucks, I don't think as much as like her husband has a say and, but it, it to me, it seems like there are other puppeteers in the mix oh, yeah. of like the parents for sure. and it doesn't sound like you call her. It doesn't sound like you are having an arranged marriage. And so maybe you have more, uh, I don't want to say bias against it. Yeah. Or like you, you grew up with like parents who like were pretty anti it. And I don't want to like say one's more progressive or one's more modern than the other. And so if you grew up with like more, a more modern upbringing, then it might be something that like, I don't know, like I've always thought about it when I, I didn't grow up religious. I desperately wanted, I like wanted to be Jewish so badly. Really? And my parents were like, that's not how Judaism works. <laughs> I was like, I really want it. All of my friends you were could Jewish. Convert. I could, yeah. but like as a child, there was like, there was no way. My parents were like, you can be a Buddhist if you want to. And I was like, fine, whatever. Wait, but why, school. why Judaism? Because all of my friends were Jewish. Oh, okay. And that was like the primarily everyone I grew up with was Jewish. And I also, I was jealous because they all had Hebrew school. They mm. all got bat mitzvahs and then they like would always be busy on Friday nights. And I was like, I'm like, fuck, what am I? Oh, and they all went to Jewish summer camp. And I was uh, like, I need something to do. You had FOMO. Yeah. But <laughs> then I like at one point was like, I'm just going to like be Christian or whatever. And then it like didn't work because like I was, you know, a kid who like wasn't educated and all of that kind of stuff. And it just wasn't like my thing. But it's like kind of like the same thing of like not believing. And I don't say this to, like knock anyone's like religion or whatever, but it's. Uh, and if any kids are listening, if you're listening around your kids, I hope you're not. But it's like when you know that Santa's not real mm -hmm. and somebody else is like, no, Santa's totally real. And you feel like you're kind of like, ah, oh, what is this sort of thing? But they're mm -hmm. so in it. And I think it might be like that with that arranged marriage. Like you can see it from a totally different like perspective than yeah. she can. And also just the option. Like, I don't think she really has a choice and an option. And I don't want to speak on arranged marriages because I don't know. But I would also assume and this could be ignorant of me to assume that an arranged marriage also might not necessarily be the marriage itself might not necessarily be uh progressive and balanced in like the female and male's voice of the household all oh, right like in a like i would assume that the man it is the man of the household he makes the rules yeah. and it is more of like a submissive part on the woman which and makes sense as to why he, he would pick the date and say no that that one friend that i don't mm -hmm. like can't come 
Yeah. It sucks. And so I think. And he probably knows that she, that the friend doesn't approve of their arrangement as well. Yeah. She probably hasn't. Or like the, the friend, the, her friend probably expressed that Mm -hmm. since Mm -hmm. she did view him as a friend. Yeah. 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 Well, I think the good thing through all of this is, is your friend still keeps coming to you, which, and she's opening up to you and telling you all this kind of stuff. So I think if anything were to go south later on, being able to keep that open line of communication with her is really good. And I think you can obviously express like your sadness for not being able to right. go to the wedding, but it's like, you know what? This is your thing. I yeah, like her life. Do whatever you're going to do. Like, I still like love yeah. you and support you and I'll be here for you no matter what. Um, but yeah, I think like it's kind of one of those sucky things that you just have to sort of like let your friends go through with all of it. And then, yeah, I, I would also, I feel for the friend too, the one that's getting married because yeah. I can only imagine the situation she's in if she doesn't. Like, if it's not in her power as to why she's getting into an arranged marriage, Mm -hmm. she's going through her own set of things. Because I, at one point, um, I was engaged before my husband. And when we were planning, when I was planning my wedding with my ex, Mm -hmm. he actually didn't want two of my closest friends to come to the wedding. And I was like, uh, no, they're, they're going to come. Like, what yeah. the fuck? I've known them since second grade. They're coming to the wedding. And so me and him had like a whole thing. And it ended up, uh, we ended up coming to this compromise as to me not asking them to be Brides bridesmaids. Yeah. And I was so heartbroken and they were extremely heartbroken yeah. too. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I'm battling this. Yeah. Luckily it didn't work out with that guy, but I'm like, you know, your friend is going through her own mm-hmm. set of problems that she's dealing with and like having this guy just one week later say, hey, we're getting married now. Like she's mm-hmm. going through her own stuff. So, I mean, it sucks. Yeah. I feel for both of them. Yeah. I think you just got to like need to continue to be like an ear to like listen and have her like vent to and stuff. And bright side, she does see him as a friend. She doesn't hate him. Right. True. <laughs> like that could be worse. And I think also like kind of at least again my ignorant ass for arranged marriages to me that seems like that seems like a like a a positive thing that you would right. hope for like going into it like you might not love each other immediately yeah. but you can grow to fall in love mm-hmm. with each other and that's what they talk about a lot with arranged yeah. marriages and so like going in being friends but i think the part that is a little like off is it feels like imbalanced yeah and the whole if he is your friend he shouldn't he should be okay with your other friend coming and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I would just say like the best you can keep your opinions to yourself and like continue to like vent to your, like vent to a therapist, vent to your, like your friends and all of mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. But like keep it as po- like the line of communication, just like open. Mm-hmm. So also when they get married, it's not like he's going to be like, Oh, you can't talk to her anymore because exactly. she hates me. Yeah. Cause then I was just going to go down south yeah. and you're really going to lose your friend. Yeah. 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 Be there for her. And, uh, don't post anything salty like the day of the wedding being oh, like, true. cheers. Yeah. That'd be me. <laughs> I'd be like, cheers, bitches. Have so much fun. <laughs> Happily ever after. Uh, but best of luck. That's stressful. True. Hi, Megan, Melissa, and Geist. Um, So my advice, the thing I need advice on, um, Melissa touched on the subject briefly in one of the past podcasts. So I thought maybe you could help. So my partner, who I've been with for enough amount of time, um, he, in his past relationship, he was with her for seven years, which was most of their teens and then the early 20s. And I'm finding it hard not to be jealous when they hang out. And when they hang out, they do things like go to the movies and go out to restaurants, and it feels very date-like to me. And I have said that this makes me uncomfortable, and I have said, like, I'm not blaming him, but, like, it does make me really uncomfortable. And I have said that I think it would help if she came to our house, we live together, to so I can get to know her so I because I fully trust him but I don't know this woman that he's hanging out with so I suggested that she came over and hung out all three of us but he she has severe anxiety so he felt like asking she might feel like she's walking into an attack which I completely understand as I have anxiety myself but I just don't know what to do 
because it makes me feel very uncomfortable. And of course, I would never stop him from seeing her. But I don't want to get upset every time they see each other or go out. And I just find it really hard. I don't know if this is important, but she also has a partner. Um, She doesn't live in the same city, so she comes in once a week for, like, appointments and that things, and she sees him. Um, Yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much. I hope you can help. Bye. Oh, my God. She's way too chill. Yeah. You're way too chill for your own fucking good. You need a little crazy in you. Just a tiny bit. Yeah. Just to protect yourself a little bit. Yeah. Maybe this will be the experience that will Mm -hmm. give that... And hurt mm-hmm. a little bit. Because, girl, it really sounds yeah. like he's, he's still got a thing with his yeah. ex. Yeah. And they were together seven years. And you said that you guys have been together enough a time. Enough time. Bitch, I like, needed to time. know how long. Yeah. And part yeah. of me want th- thinks that the reason why she didn't say is because it's not yeah. Yeah, it's that pretty long. Short. But she probably really likes him. And she's yeah. saying that. And they she live really, together. Yeah. I mean, that that's a commitment there. Mm-hmm. But she's saying that, you know, she trusts him enough. And the fact you that you don't know her <laughs> at all. Yeah. And then they go out and have their dates. Yeah. That's Mm-mm. inappropriate. It is. That's just straight up inappropriate. Yeah. That's disrespectful too. Cause like, you know, you have your place in his life as his girlfriend. You're living together. Mm-hmm. How is he gonna just disrespect that and say, hey, I'm gonna go hang out with my ex girlfriend mm-hmm. of seven years, ditch you? And no, you know, making up I mean, I don't know, she could have anxiety, but it just seems like an like an yeah. excuse to not have you guys get close. Maybe she's, because uh, you mentioned that she does have a partner. Maybe she's cheating on that mm-hmm. partner yeah. and they don't want anything to get messy. It's like, oh, you know what? Right now my girlfriend's really cool. Let's keep this going. Yeah. She's not asking too many questions. Like, yeah. She's fine. I just think that I think that all of that's spot on. I think like it is such a such a super sticky situation that I think, and you can speak to this because you mm-hmm. are friends with your exes, that like if you want to hang out with your ex and it's purely friendship, the shit that has to go, the work that has to go on behind the scenes with your act, like your current relationship mm-hmm. needs to be like, hey, I'm like, we're, I'm so happy with you. Like things are great. Like I like, and even early on in dating, it should be mm-hmm. like, I just want you to like heads up. I have a yeah. close friend of mine. We did date for a long period of time where it's totally platonic now. Like we are really good friends. It has like, I understand if it could feel like un- uncomfortable. Uh, I really don't want to lose her as a friend. I mm-hmm. really love to like introduce you guys and like, see if you guys can like get along and vibe. And if not, then at that point he has to pick. Like, exactly. Yep. You and can't have your cake and eat it too. No. no and he's not can't. introducing you in the same thing. Like that's weird. why is her boyfriend not there? Mm-hmm. Exactly. And like why, if there's an opportunity to double date there, but they're right. just solo hanging out. Like it's just super fucking weird. And it shouldn't even be like, it shouldn't be dinner or movies and all that stuff yeah, like, because that is romantic. Mm-hmm. Like Moss has female mm-hmm. friends and they're like, yeah, we're going like, go to like go for a drink and I'll be home for dinner right after. It's like that kind of thing. And I'm like, OK, fine. Sure. Go ahead. But are like, they his exes? No. Exactly. And have you met them and yes. know them? Yes. See? Do I like them all? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like, but at the same time, it's like there is like a level of like courtesy to that. Like exactly. if he was like, yeah, hey, I'm going to go to like a dinner and a movie with this like female friend of mine. If I didn't know her, like there is a handful of female friends of his that like if he went out with that, I'd be like, there's one specifically that I'd be like, yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Like love her. She's great. She's awesome. She's got a boyfriend. But that's also because I know her. Yeah. I know her boyfriend. Like I'm also in that world in that circle. And it's always massive recognition. Red flags when there is a whole other world that mm-hmm. you're not a part of. Yeah. And yeah. when he's keeping that relation and they're both keeping that relationship so separate and just between the two of them, yeah. that's red flag central. Yeah. Exactly. Cause there's no there needs to be a a sense of connection with ev- all the parties involved. Yeah. Like some sort of like familiarity where you can have that trust and that communication to mm-hmm. be like, oh, you know what? Everything's cool. I know her. She's cool. And also. Her saying, him saying, for wow, this is just a, this is a light bulb to me. Him saying, "Oh, I don't want to ask her; she's anxiety. She's going to think it's an ambush. Why would it be an ambush unless exactly. there's something to be ambush exactly. over?" Exactly. The f- exes that I, you said that I touched it on this before. The exes that I'm friends with, I'm if they are in relationships with people, I am just as close with their mm-hmm. girlfriends, if not closer mm-hmm. than with the girlfriends. And I never hang out with them without the girlfriend there. Yeah, ever. I hang out with the girlfriends solo, but never without it. But if I'm hanging out with him, respect. I don't hang out. Yeah. And also you waited for them to and come to you mm-hmm. of being like, would love to be your friend at some point. Yep. Let like, and yeah. you very much like let them take Be, the reins yeah. of that. 
get yeah. settled into their relationship first yeah. and then introduce me. And you checked yeah. in to be like, they know that we've dated, like, yeah. I'm not going to walk into that situation yeah. in that and sort of thing. Not just that, but like, if, let's say, if the caller would end up somehow on her own reaching out to this the, yeah. the friend, the ex-girlfriend, and saying like, hey, you know, I just really want to get to know you. You know, you've been spending a lot of time with mm-hmm. my boyfriend, and I would just love to get to know you. That reaction, like what, however she reacts, will tell you immediately the type of relationship she that blocks they have. you. Yeah, because <laughs> they're fucking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because um, there was this one situation with my husband back when we were dating. He had this friend of his that they were they they would like connect here and there throughout yeah. the years because they went to high school together. And one year, because he's from Dallas, so one year I was in Dallas with him. And then he was like, oh, uh, my friend wants to meet up to have dinner. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, cool. So am I coming? And he was like, yeah, yeah, let me tell her. And so he told her (gasps) and then she canceled immediately and and she never spoke to him ever again. And I'm like. She clearly had a thing for you, mm-hmm. and you, because he was like, "Nah, no way." She's like my little sister, and he never saw her that yeah. way. He friend zoned her. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, if we want to play like your boyfriend's a great dude, all that stuff, it could be that he could have no idea that she has feelings for him. Mm-hmm. But the issue is, is like, as opposed to that, where it's like, "Oh yeah, totally, I'll ask her," and then it's being like rug gets pulled out from underneath both of you, and it's like, "Oh shit, she likes me like this." I mm-hmm. have no idea. Yeah, he is protecting her a little bit too much. Right. Mm-hmm. To my, he must know. But he has to have, even if he like won't admit it to himself and Mm -hmm. even if like they're not doing anything Mm -hmm. and they're not, I mean, they're not doing anything physical. They are going out to dinner and they are like essentially like emotionally doing this kind of stuff. There's a part of him that like knows that it's wrong and that kind of thing. And I think the other like misconception is, is if someone's uh, like being unfaithful or someone's lying to you or something, they're going to omit all of the truth. Right. The best lies involve a part of the truth mm-hmm. and then not the rest. Yep. So the fact that it, he's gaining, again, I don't want to like vilify him, but like to be fair, like I think this is like a villainous thing that he's doing, yeah. but to tell like, hey, like you're like, oh, of course he's not cheating. I'm like, he's telling me he's going out to dinner with his ex-girlfriend. Like that's like such a huge, like why would he tell me if there was something else going on? Like it to me, it's like, it's right under your nose that's true you he's know? like see i was being honest with you exactly. what i'm not hiding anything uh-huh. what are you talking yeah. about <laughs> and so like you don't feel the need to like go through his exactly. phone and like check all of that kind of that's stuff why she sounds so chill because she's like uh, like he's done enough to make her feel secure well now she just feels crazy mm-hmm. that's right. the thing i'm like you're be, you're being like you're being like i don't even want to say you're being gaslit like you're being like the burners on underneath you or you just hear the clicking in the other room and you're like is the gas turning on mm-hmm. like it's the, what is happening here? Am I going to die from carbon monoxide poisoning? <laughs> so, I mean, like, my evil advice would be uh, go through his phone, uh, check his Venmo, check his, like, Ubers, <laughs> check that shit and see that kind of stuff and, like, see, like, uh, are they splitting the dinners? Like, is she paying him back for that kind of stuff? Like, if you guys share, like, mail, I mean, that don't go through his mail. That's actually technically illegal. Not technically. <laughs> that is fucking illegal. <laughs> so let us know what happens. Yeah. Um, I want to Go know through too. his phone. <laughs> go through his phone. Also, maybe turn go into his phone if you know his password and turn um, location sharing mm-hmm. on Ooh. so you know where he's at. Yeah, you can go. Spy and then, and then yeah. figure out what they're doing. <laughs> because, like, we don't even actually know that they're going to movies and Ooh, going. Ooh, that's mm-hmm. true. Meeting at a motel. Yeah. Ugh. On to the next one. Hi, Megan, Melissa, and guest. Um, I have a little issue where, so my best friend is this guy, and I think I might have feelings for him, but I'm also, so I'm super inexperienced, like, sexually and stuff, um, and he is not. And he also has told me that basically without this wording that um, I am on his no fuck list because um, I don't know, I've helped him with a lot of like girl issues when he's like had problems. He was in a really bad relationship that's still kind of continuing. So I've been trying to help him, but it's really hard to, um, I don't know, be supportive when, I have feelings for him and I try to ignore them and that's what I'm doing best. But I just, I love spending time with him. So I, I still hang out with him a lot and I'm not super close with 
uh, my other friends that are like, we're all kind of in the same friend group, but me and him don't really enjoy our other friends because most of them are pretty annoying. And I go, I live in a relatively small town, so it's kind of hard to reach up, out to other people. I'm in high school, by the way, so um, yeah, I it's kind of hard to find new people. So I find myself just hanging out with him all the time. And like people make jokes about like, oh, you guys are like gonna get married, which I used to be like, oh, whatever, that's stupid. Like it doesn't matter. And then I got super uncomfortable by people saying that, and now I'm like. I'm back to not really caring about when they say shit like that, but it's just kind of, it's a lot. Like, people say it too much to the point where it makes me uncomfortable. Not, I don't know. It just, it makes me feel weird. So, yeah, any advice you could give me it would be great. What do I do? Okay, bye. I love the podcast. I just want to know what he said. Yeah. That wasn't, like... She's like, and not, he didn't say no fuck less, but no fuck. Like, how else do you say that? Like, you're my best yeah, friend. Like, or and my I don't sister. ever want to, yeah, my Something sister. Like I don't ever want to change that type of relationship. Wait, does she say that she has told him no. how Mm-mm. she fe- feels? Because I don't know, man. Cause you that, fucking have to. Yeah, at this point, you have to. Yeah, because the issue, so this was me in high school. I didn't tell, I didn't even, re- well, I didn't realize that I was in love with him at all. He was like my best friend, every fucking teacher, all of our friends, everywhere we went, everyone was like, oh my God, you guys are so cute. And we were like, oh no, we're just friends. Like we're not dating. <laughs> and we were like, and we dated one, we dated in seventh grade for like two weeks. <laughs> we were like, uh, but we were like literally like best, best, best friends. Um, and my friend got drunk and called him and said, Megan's in love with you. Ooh. And I was like, what? And she called me and then told me that that night. And I like woke up the next morning and I was like, what the fuck, bitch? And yeah. she was like, I'm sorry, but like, I'm really sorry that I did that. But like, it is true. And I was like, no, it's not. And I was with my other friend. My other friend was like, Ooh. and I was like, what? And like my oh, world wow. came crashing down. We ended up dating for like a year and some time or whatever. Oh. And it was like great first love, first boyfriend, first boning. <laughs> <laughs> first all that shit, not first kiss or. I mean, for some shit, <laughs> not all of it, I guess. Um, but I, I know the feeling like he was asking that I was helping him ask this other girl to prom. And I like, I, you were, I think much more advanced than, you know, but I couldn't figure out like why I was like so upset that I was like mm. helping him ask this other girl to prom. And like, I just felt like shit. How like did he feel about you. So, but that's the thing. He never, he, we were, would refer to each other as best friends. And I think there was a, like, we definitely, when people would like say that, like, oh my God, you guys are on a date. We would both equally be like, oh my God, ew, no. So part of me wa- wonders if like him, I, and I hate the term friend zoning, but like, yeah, him putting you on his like no fuck list or whatever. How much of that was both of you kind of implying the same mm. thing? Because like we used right. to do that, like to protect our, both of us. And like, yeah, yeah, it turns out we both were super into each other for like a long time. And so if it was like fully on his own accord that he just brings up, like you yeah. said, like out of the blue of being like, you're, oh my God, I like, I'm so happy that you're like my sister. Like mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. never want to jeopardize that. And if he like did that again, all on his own accord, then I would kind of be like, say, if you need to say it for yourself, say it for yourself. But like, I think there's a 90% chance that like he just sees you as a friend. Mm -hmm. But if it was more of that, like, oh my gosh, no, like we're, we, like we both are kind of saying the same things about each other. Then I think like say it and it might turn out well, but at the end of the day, I think you just, I don't know. You just kind of have to fucking, you have to kind of say it or not be as close with him. Another thing that stood out to me about what she was saying was that he, she's not very sexually experienced, but that he is. Yeah. That to me kind of, I don't know, like if he is into her and she's yeah. kind of hiding it, that could be his way of like further being like, like he's denying his own feelings and like making up yeah. these other sexual experiences to tell her to be like mm. further. It's like a, he's protecting his ego. Yeah, so he's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going yeah. to be vulnerable and I'm not going to open up my heart mm-hmm. if he does ha- like you and he's yeah. into you. Um, and so he's like putting all these things into your ear and little do you know, but you both actually like each other. Yeah. But it end up, it, it will end up further 
hurting your friendship if you continue it the way you are where you're hiding your feelings you yeah. have to let him know if you haven't already once he find once he tells you how he feels you're just gonna have to accept let's say he says that he's not into you you're just gonna have to accept that and move on and I would suggest to just no matter how much it hurts because you love hanging out with him you're just gonna have to detach yeah because you're you cannot put yourself in that situation because I've been on the other end where in high school I had this guy best friend mm -hmm. and we were neighbors so we would always hang out we would walk to school together all that stuff and we at one point he ends up telling me that he really liked me and I felt so like confused and like bad because yeah. I did not feel the same way for him I, I really loved our friendship but I, I was not into him at all and so I ended up telling him I'm like um well I can't lie to you and pretend that I do because I don't and he ended up like hating my guts yeah for many years after that and he would like avoid me and I was so heartbroken because I lost my friend but I had to accept that too where I'm like I can't expect him to continue to be in my life when I can't reciprocate the same, same feelings it's just it's torture yeah I, I I I agree and I think the thing is is like you need to figure out like if someone was asking him or if he was telling someone else the same situation, would he ever turn around and say, I'm on her no fuck list? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. is it like, it, it, has this been something that has been so much him or are you a little bit guilty of that? Like you said like kind of pushing away yeah. too and just like saying this kind of stuff to create this distance because you're not sure if you guys like each other back. But if like, yeah, but if you could, if you could never see him saying that and it's like, oh no, or if he could, if you think he could potentially have any sort of, inclining to your feelings then I think that was probably like a nice way or nicer way of yeah, him trying high school to is so hard too because in high yeah. school you're everyone is putting up a front like mm -hmm. it's like full-on ego like to the to the max so there's no way that either of you will ever get to the place of vulnerability to even open up to each other even yeah. though you guys are like so close and you're always hanging out you're saying you don't really like your other group of friends I don't know. To me, it just seems like he might be into you, too. It's yeah. just that you guys have your ego so, so crazy big that you cannot mm -hmm. open up. And also, if he talks to you, if he talks to you about, like, sex, sex, intimate detail, if detail stuff with girls, I hate to break it to you. I think that's kind of like, a ooh, he's probably not. Because at the end of the day, I think talking True. a big game of, like, oh, yeah, this girl and this girl, but not, like, yeah, fucking fuck that wet pussy with my dick. <laughs> like, that's... That's how I that's talk true. with my guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's how, like, my guy friends where we're, like, friend friends. Like, mm -hmm. that's how we, like, we talk, like, nasty shit mm -hmm. like that. But that's not something, like, when Mots and I were friends for a year before we started dating, and I knew he was dating girls, but he was never like, oh, yeah, piped hard last <laughs> night. Like, that specific sort of stuff yeah. is very, I think that's kind of friend zony. That's it's, true. like, the same thing. Like, if you, if you... I don't know. Like I'll talk to like <laughs> I'll talk to my guy friends. They're like, "How are you doing?" I'm like, "Oh, brutal yeast infection." <laughs> but like, if you wouldn't say that, Jamie, like yeah. I could say that to him if you like have feelings or whatever. You're like, oh, "Not much. How about you?" But like, yeah, there there is those like little nuanced things that I think can imply where you guys both are at. But um, I think also if you I think you're gonna need to take distance from him if you also decide that you don't want to tell him and you think he doesn't have feelings exactly. for you. But at the end of the day, I think. I think it's better just to tell him. And if your friendship is strong uh, already, I think you guys will get through it eventually. And also just know that this is a, like not, I'm not saying morbid thing to say, but like once your feelings have already gotten romantic for, so for someone, your friendship is kind of, it is different. Like it has changed. Mm -hmm. It has gone. Yeah. It's there's the no same, way it's the same yeah, as before at all. And I think like if you're trying to preserve, like, well, I don't want to tell him cause I don't want to ruin our friendship. Mm -hmm. Like, well, right now he's not your friend. You like him. Exactly. And so you're going to have to distance yourself from him. And then if you don't tell him why he's going to be like, what's going on? And it exactly. just creates a whole more entangled web. That is so true. But this could also just be like a really cute romantic story. You yeah. guys could go to if prom he, together. Yeah. So if he reciprocates did. the same feelings. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be fun. Just make out with him and see what if or I mean consensually make no, out. No, because like that made me think about that guy. That was, do you, oh you make did he try and kiss you? No. So okay, don't do this if you're in the same position as me. But listen, sixteen you tried right. Sixteen year old like, Tiff didn't know what she was doing. But once he told me he liked me, and I was like, I don't, because um, we were yeah. I was at his house, 
and we were hanging out and stuff. And that's when he told me. And then he was sitting in his living room and his couch wasn't up against the wall. It was like, you uh-huh. know, mm-hmm. like in the yeah. middle of the room. And after he said that, like we we went our separate ways in the house and then some time passed. And then I, I felt so bad that I'm like. Maybe if I kissed him. Like, oh no, this is me. You're, don't, you're I, in a safe space. Would I? <laughs> you're in a fully safe would space. I, uh, you know, yeah. would I end up feeling something? Like, what if? You know. So then I go up to him and like I, I reach Spider-Man. over. Spider Man. I did. <laughs> I did like a Spider Man kind of thing, and so we kissed. And <laughs> you're like, no, I'm still. And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I really don't. I felt so. That's why he stopped talking to me. I didn't want to um, say that part because I, I feel so no. guilty. Like I feel bad about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're talking about this, No, it's- but yeah, I totally felt so bad. And like, like I said, I felt really heartbroken because I, I lost my friend. Yeah. And but- friendship to relationship is super confusing because you're mm-hmm. like, I do really love you and I really care about you. And it's like, have I just not thought of you in that light before? Like maybe like it is, it is so parallel yeah, and close that you're so like, you're just trying to figure it yeah, out. No, I tell Melissa, I'm like, I have to sleep with people before I decide if I like them <laughs> or not. Like that's why I'm like, okay, definitely don't like you. Oh my God. That's yeah. funny. Or I'm like, okay, I like you. But yeah, so I totally understood yeah. why he hated my guts. Because I could put myself in his shoes. Oh, yeah. And he's probably like, this bitch. She tells me she doesn't like me. And then she kisses me. makes me all happy. And then she tells me she still doesn't like me. What the fuck? Yeah, but you know he, like, went out to college and did the exact same shit. And it was like, oh, okay. True. Yeah. You know what, though? Interestingly enough. Did uh, he get married to, like, the next person he dated? Oh, no, no, no. No. So, well, actually, I don't know what happened. But years later, after high school and stuff... Um, I was in between relationships and then we actually reconnected and he, he ended up going to the Marines. He came back hella hot and I was like, oh shit. So (laughs) you're like that little last piece is good. So I'm like, okay. And so, yeah, we ended up hooking up. Oh, okay. (laughs) Oh, so you have, first of all, he played the long game. And also he's not mad at all. Like this, like that was the most satisfying thing to like 16 year old him. He's like, I did it <laughs> finally yeah and wow. then after and then we just stopped yeah. talking yeah <laughs> that was well it. you scratched the itch uh-huh yeah. oh my god that was really probably the best day of his fucking life yeah. <laughs> like the fucking mm-hmm. best that's a great True. wow yeah you were keeping a lot you from were. us with that story i really was, was. <laughs> <more anywhere. laughs> I was like, is this going to come out? Oh, shit, it's coming out. <laughs> but that's how you always want it, though, with that, like, one that got away. So yeah. from his perspective, yeah. that, like, one that got away that, like, you then hook up and then it's like, oh, okay, cool. Like, mm-hmm. that's so satisfying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd yeah. love to hook up with, like, my old, I mean, not now. <laughs> Moth isn't listening. But, like, with my old crushes that, like, you know, that, like, nothing ever came, for like, through with it when oh, you're, like, in yeah. middle school. Like, my middle school self would die to be like, <laughs> true. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. BetterHelp offers licensed professional counselors who are specialized in issues such as depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, and more. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment and get help at your own time and at your own pace. Anything you share is confidential and it is so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. If for some reason you're not happy with your counselor though, you can request a new one at any time for no additional charge. Best of all, it is a truly affordable option. Our listeners even get 10% off your first month with the discount code BLAME. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash BLAME, then simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with the counsel you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash BLAME. Make 2020 the year to prioritize you and commit to staying on top of your health. Instead of that laundry list of resolutions that you don't end up sticking with, Care Of can make taking care of your vitamins and supporting your health goals attainable. Care Of's short online quiz makes it easy. Simply answer some questions about your diet, health goals, and lifestyle, and Care Of will recommend a list of vitamins and supplements specifically for your health needs and goals. Whether it's improving your fitness routine or managing stress, you can follow Care Of's expert recommendations or adjust your pack at any time. What you receive is totally up to you. Care Of is focused on the quality, science, and research that goes into each of their products and the recommendations. Their yummy protein powders made with real ingredients you can recognize like organic cocoa and pink Himalayan sea salt. You guys, I'm sure you know of Care Of now. First of all, the branding, adorable. And as a Leo, I'm just going to say my favorite part is my individual vitamin packs have my name on them. 
and it makes me feel great. I love this quiz. I mean, I love a quiz in general, but this one goes really, really, really in depth. And the recommendations that you get are fantastic and so different. And I just find really on top of exactly what I need. I really like the little energy, little packet things. Those I had as an add-on. They're fantastic for you to pick me up in the middle of the day. For 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code BLAME50. That's takecareof.com and code BLAME50 for 50% off your first care of order. Okay, should we get back into it? Let's do it. Woo woo. I'm 24. I'm a graduate student and I have a bit of a situation with one of my classmates slash coworkers. So we met a year ago when we started our program and he asked me out pretty soon after we met. And we ended up not going out because he like never follows through with that. But basically, I've known that he's been interested in me. He's tried to ask me out since, but I've always just kind of said, like, no, since he didn't follow up that first time. Um, So I've just known that he's been interested in me for a while. We have mutual friends. We go out together on the weekends on top of taking classes together and working together. And last night, we were out at a bar. He drove me home because I didn't want to pay for an Uber. And... I invited him to come upstairs to my apartment and we ended up making out, but not hooking up. And he, we basically then had a chat about what are we even doing? I said, I'm not interested in a relationship and I've expressed that to him before. So I'm just wondering what I should do is it's going to be awkward at work probably. And I just feel like I'm kind of being shitty because I had him come over and feel like I'm leading him on, but I express that I'm like really not interested in anything, but I'm also wondering if he's at fault because he keeps coming around and sort of hanging around me, texts me, like he's trying to pursue me, even though I said that I'm not interested. Um, So I just don't know if, I'm being shitty if I should, I don't know, like not even try to be friends with him or what the best situation is. Yeah, I'm basically just wondering if I'm leading him on or if he's um, just not asking for it. I don't like that phrase, but, you know. Mm. I I think she needs to take responsibility for her part in this. A hundred percent. But I think they both do. Because I think at the end of the day, like, is he in love with you? Like, if he's not in love with you, like, what did he say when you didn't want to do anything? Like, would you want to be fucked buddies with him? Would he be cool with that? Because if he says, yeah, I'm cool with being fucked buddies, that's on him. Mm -hmm. If then, like, if he's actually not. He has feelings. Yeah, Yeah. it's like, I I always like, take what everyone says at face value. Like, if they say that they're fine with something, like... Yeah, you don't you don't owe that to them, but at the same time, I think like if he's fucking so head over heels, like in love with you, and you're like making out with him, being like, "Logic, hey, like, like you drive me home, you can come upstairs, yeah. we're gonna make out." I know. But you know, this is like no. the grown up version of what I did <laughs> in high school. In both, it's the same dude. Why does that always happen? Why? He's back in grad school now. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think that, like, y- like you said, I think you need to assume some of the uh, some of this responsibility, sure. but like. If you guys are friends, of course he's going to keep texting you yeah. and all that stuff. But, like, you don't have to make out with him. And you don't right. have to, like, like you say, you don't have to, like, invite him in and flirt with him and kind of, like, go the extra mile. I think, like, you can treat him how you would treat a friend that you know has romantic feelings for mm-hmm. you and kind of have a little bit of that buffer there so he right. can get over you. Exactly. But, yeah. You know what I think it is, too? Uh, because I'm trying to tap into 16-year-old me. And... It definitely like the reason why she invited him up and yeah. do all that stuff. I think it might be because she does kind of find it like a, a, kind of like a confidence booster mm-hmm. of like, oh, Just this like guy's into me. Like, mm-hmm. even though I don't really reciprocate it, but yeah, yeah. I, got, I got someone after me. Yeah. yeah. Like, so she's probably in denial of the fact mm-hmm. that it's feeding it into good. her own ego. Mm-hmm. And she kind of just needs to accept that. Yeah. Like, and just face it because, yeah, it's not fair to 
kind of lead him on because you really are leading him on even though you're not trying to yeah doing these these actions they read as you're leading him on so if you're really really not into him you just gotta like what you're saying just create that buffer and kind of create that distance because yeah. it's not fair at the end of the day though i don't even think that it's that you're not into him i think this is like a game of chicken or it's whatever any sort of cat game. and mouse cat, yeah that he like he was very like he asked you out and then didn't follow up and you're like oh fuck you so like and it's you're like leaving him on red for like five years like, oh that's what it do, is that's what that, yeah it's like yeah. you're being like I see you not going taking that on that one oh, day yeah. I'm gonna like keep you in this limbo because exactly what it is it's like you like the attention but I also think like you weren't opposed to him do you mm-hmm. know what I mean it wasn't like oh I'm not sure. attracted to him or into him at all it was like a cha- like a mischance thing and it sounds like you guys have never talked about it right. so I think like he is still pursuing it and like maybe it's that you want him to you said that like he asked you out once and then you couldn't you've always known since then he's had a little bit of a thing for you like mm-hmm. is it that you want like a grand gesture like yeah. do you want that sort of a thing and like especially to make up for the fact that he like yeah. stood her up kind of and her saying that like I don't really want like a relationship or anything is it because you think that like he's a fuck boy and he can't give that to you mm-hmm. because like he didn't follow through that first time so like you're a little like trepidatious of him mm-hmm. um but I think if you don't want a relationship and you don't want to date anyone and all you want is a casual hookup, yeah, don't hook up with someone who has yeah. feelings for you. I think that's just like get point messy. blank. But if you like him, also, what's your what's your hold up on not wanting to get into a relationship or not wanting to date anyone? And if it's like, oh, I just got out of a really bad relationship that really sucked for a long time, that's totally fine. But then keep like, Keep it separate. Keep mm-hmm. your like sexual relations and all of that stuff separate from your friend group and don't make anything that's messy. Mm-hmm. But if it's just you're afraid of getting hurt because he hurt you that one time, I would mm-hmm. give him a chance and an opportunity because I think you're both right. into each other, but you're both being like, mm-hmm. but I think, I think you're both, I think you're waiting for him to go above and beyond. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and to, like make up for it. Like you right. said, exactly. that's kind of what that seems like. That's true. Cause yeah, you like, I don't know. Like if you hated him, you wouldn't invite him in to like make out. And exactly. Stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's yeah, just or like, you would have taken the Uber. Right. You just yeah. would have. <laughs> I know this because this was so I, I've been this girl where it's like, oh, man, I don't take an Uber. And it's like, do you want to come inside? Exactly. <laughs> do you want to make out? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even think that's like a bad thing. I don't necessarily think you're leading him on because I don't think you're leading him on. I think you like him, too. Mm-hmm. I think you just like aren't really admit. I don't think you want to at this point. You don't want to yeah. let yourself feel like that. And so you're kind of being this it's like that pride. It's yeah, because that he hurt you. He exactly. like hurt you. Like it. That's a big ego blow. Mm-hmm. And I think sure like she's really prideful to the point where she's like, "Well, no, nah, I'm not going to give him what he wanted yeah. before because he fucked up." Like, mm-hmm. bro, I've had insane pride issues. Yeah, it doesn't get you anywhere. No, and also you are giving him it though. Like, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, that's you're true. Making, like you're doing <laughs> it. Like that's just true. like sit. Like I think it, it's in your head a little bit more mm-hmm. than it is of being like, "Oh no, I can't." And then also like. Have you ever had a conversation with him about it of being like that time that all that stuff happened that really sucked and it hurt? And mm-hmm. I think I've had feelings for you that whole time and have a conversation with him about right. it because maybe he had a really good excuse. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe maybe someone told him that you had a boyfriend or maybe something else happened. Like this is just such a rom-com moment yeah. where it's like, <laughs> let's go on a date. She's like, yeah, I'm down. And then he never follows up. And there's like some big like, bitch who's like, yeah. yeah, or some du- like douchey guy who like likes you at in class too, being like, oh, she's got a boyfriend. Like yeah. he's overseas in the military or something (laughs) and then he's like oh okay and then he's like i'll just be her friend for years and then you're there being like what's happening i don't have a boyfriend like what's going on Mm -hmm. just have a fucking conversation true i think you guys are cleared up very into each other (laughs) and you didn't fuck yeah I can't believe that. No, because she's dangling the carrot in front of his face. I don't have that kind of... (laughs) I love attention, but I don't have that kind of self-control. I am 21, and about a month or two ago, I decided to go visit my friends at college, and we decided to go out, like, every night of the weekend and whatever. Um, So we went out. I ended up hooking up with one of, like, all of our mutual... Like, one of our mutual friends in the group or whatever, and it was whatever. I didn't really think much of it kind of kept it to myself except I told one other friend where I was going to be and whatever um so yeah turns out she or one of my friends um like apparently has or had like a crush on this guy that I ended up hooking up with 
And I kind of feel guilty not telling her. But at the same time, I had gone up there and wanted to spend the weekend. I wanted to kind of just like let go and have fun. But I ended up having to uh, corral the girls group and kind of try and solve their issues that they had been having. So I put myself aside and I kind of like I did the hookup for myself, like under the radar. Um, But now I'm kind of regretting not telling anybody because I had no idea that she apparently like liked him. And I, I know that like people were trying to hook them up at some point, but it, like, I never heard like it became of anything. So I don't know. I'm just really confused and conflicted. I don't know if I should tell her. Um, I don't know if she'll care or if she's like, if she even likes him or if she even liked him. Um, I don't want to start drama. I'm really not a drama person. I just kind of, I really want to keep it to myself, but at the same time, it's eating away at my self conscious And all I think about is that, and I get really, um, I just feel really guilty for some reason. And so I don't know if I should tell her to get that off my back or sure if I should just leave it to myself um, to not cause drama. I've done this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I hooked up with my friends. Like she had a crush on him from like maybe eighth grade or seventh or sixth grade all the way through senior year. I made out with him. I think all we did was make out. We might've done like, handsy sort of shit mm-hmm. uh because i was in a bikini which would you would assume that you've got easy <laughs> access yeah. to both ends uh and we hooked up i didn't tell her which is my advice to you but he told her mm. one of his friends told her uh and it was like that caught me in a place of being like i was kind of i had the same mentality of being like for me, like, it didn't mean anything. I was so wasted, had recently broken up with my boyfriend. Like, I was making out with fucking anyone and everyone. Like, I never had feelings for him. It, like, it wasn't serious yeah. at all. But you knew that she I liked also him. knew. <laughs> That's <laughs> what makes it worse. In the moment. Um, but also at the same time, like, she had had a, she had a boyfriend at the time. Like, it was one of those things that, like, they had never dated. Like, mm-hmm. he wasn't into her. She had this, like, unrequited crush on him. But, like, she had a boyfriend at the time. So... I mean, it wasn't definitely wasn't kosher. Yeah. And I also was not thinking about her at all. It wasn't even like, oh, I shouldn't do this. I just did it. And it was afterwards. Like, I was like, my friend was like, by the way, you hooked up with him. I was like, oh, shit, she's going to kill me. Not going to tell her. Yeah. But yeah, it does. I think like because you went into a friend group, it's your friend group, but you went into their college Mm -hmm. friend group. There is a high likelihood that that's going to get back to her, not from you. Yeah. And that's going to be so much worse. Yeah. And I wanted to ask too, like, are you still talking to this guy or like, are you guys, or is it just like one time, like never again, never talk about it again. does he feel the same way? Cause if he's going to be bragging to his friends and a hundred percent, she's going to know. Yeah. But how do you know that she liked him or had a crush on him? Because if you don't know from her, mm-hmm. depends on how much you trust that friend who told you. If you're like, bitch, you never told me that shit. Like, wipe yeah. that clean and I'm never going to know. True. But at the same time, I think if that friend of yours is going to tell you that she had feelings for him, I think she's probably also going to tell her that you uh-huh. hooked up with him. Oh, yeah. So I think you that just... That friend likes drama. Yeah. <laughs> and it sounds like this whole friend group kind of does like drama. And I think uh, I would say yeah. just further advancement i think big friend groups of girls are really hard in general um but i think just word to the uh, just if you're ever doing this situation and you're going into like a group of your girlfriends i think it's a great time like before you go out suss out hey we're gonna be hanging out with this group of guys i'm the new one here fill me in right who likes who who's hooked up with who and who's yeah. done that kind of stuff and my best friend had this crush uh this is not the same one i would have never done that to her um <laughs> but her she she liked this guy and we were we were in like i forget what grade we were in we were like 15 mm-hmm. 15 or 16 16 we met oh no we, i was turning 16 so we were 15 and we were going to our friend's house and she was like oh yeah like she's got this whole group of guy friends like everyone like you should totally like i hadn't had my first kiss yet and she's mm-hmm. like oh my god they're so cute you're really gonna like them it's gonna be awesome like there's only one that i like just like not him mm. and i get there and he's so cute the one that she likes <laughs> yeah. and i was like oh. and then i was like not gonna do anything and he was like all about like talking to me like really doing all Uh-oh. that kind of stuff and then afterwards we got in the car and i was like i'm so sorry like i really was trying to shut that down and she was like oh no i don't care like i want you guys to go for it that's totally fine mm. but like you when you know that kind of going into it it creates that buffer to kind of protect yourself from it. And so I think like, I don't want to say your friend should have told you in this situation. Mm -hmm. I think it's just less sticky in general when you know, especially because you're going into 
I don't know, you're going in with all these yeah. other guys that you don't know, but it is your like girlfriend group and you're getting caught up on the drama. I think it is good to know. Did she mention that. how she found out that her no, friend? I think her, she said she only told one friend. So I'm yeah. assuming that one friend that, told so her. So she didn't know that she liked this guy before yeah. hooking up with him. I wouldn't feel that guilty because you did nothing wrong. Like, yeah. You didn't know. And I guess now that you know, that's why you're feeling the guilt. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. You know. I probably would have just, I don't know, man. I feel like I don't want to keep it. Like, I, everyone makes kind of everyone. Like, yeah. Everybody kind of liked everyone anyway. Yeah. And so she might have a crush on him now, but, but she like, probably has a crush on 10 other guys. Yeah. too. I think it just depends on how much you trust the friend that told you. Yeah. Cause I think she can spin that. And I think if she likes drama that can get out of hand yeah. really quickly. Yeah. Cause and it could have even just been a passing comment where she's like, Oh, he's really cute. And might not even be like an actual mm-hmm. crush. Oh, true. There's, there's a difference between like having a crush on somebody and liking someone. And if she liked him, then I would feel guilty. But yeah. like, if it's just a crush, that she's done nothing about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, like and you didn't know nothing anything. Nothing pisses of, me off more oh, than yeah. that. I'm like, you cannot claim territory on no. a crush that you've done right. not jack and, shit about. And you didn't yeah. know about it. Like, yeah. it was a crush. Yeah. It's not like she actually liked him. Or they dated. And I think the thing is, you sound like a cancer, mostly because you said you were taking care of your friend group and you were like the mom. And mm-hmm. I was like, that sounds like that. But I think if if this is about your like guilty conscience, I think... What I would do if I, I mean, this isn't what I would do, but if I were to, if I were you, the goal would be to minimize your fault in the situation. Mm -hmm. And I think if you don't tell your friend, yeah, that can be, she can, she can, she can hold on to that. And that can be something that you didn't, that, that like you then found out you had a crush and you didn't say anything. But if you go to her and you're like, Hey, uh, I just want to let you know, um, I, that night that we all went out, I had like made out or like hooked up with this, this guy. And I really didn't think anything of it. Mm -hmm. And like the next morning I was talking to whatever Becky and I told her and she brought up in passing that like you had had a crush on him. And you're like, I didn't really think anything. Like I didn't think too much of it. Like I didn't ask a lot of questions, but it has been making me feel really bad. I wasn't sure if this was like still a present crush or if you guys had done anything. And I just didn't yeah. want it to come from anybody else from me because then what's she going to do at that exactly. point? Is she going to be like, oh, you bitch, you came to me and told yeah. me you feel bad. <laughs> like I There's think there's no fault in that yeah. when you actually come forward and you admit it or like whatever, if it, if it comes from you first, mm-hmm. There's nothing she could hold against you. Yeah. At all. And even if someone, even if your other friend tells her, but you tell, you don't, you, you're not just responding when you get confronted. Like you're the one bringing forth mm-hmm. that and like essentially being like, Hey, I did that this thing. more respect. Yeah. yeah. And, and even if she wants to be mad at you for that, I think that will also help your guilty conscience. Cause it's like, well, like, what was I supposed to do? I didn't exactly. know you liked this guy, not a mind reader. I can't know all of that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if anything, she might even get mad at the other friend of being like, why would you tell her that I like, like I had a crush <laughs> on this dude. So I think that can kind of push the blame from off of you. Yeah. But yeah, I just think in general, when you're going out with big groups of girls, just suss out who everyone's into. Wow. Well, yeah. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> would love to know the update. Um, True. Did let you us know her? what you decide to do. Is it now time for Don't Blame Them? Ooh. So mm. this is when a listener will call in with their own advice from a different episode. If they're like, oh, I've made out with my f- friend's crush and we'll hear all about it. Mm. I'm calling about episode 105 with Jesse Smiles. Um, I'm calling about the girl who wanted to sell feet pics. Um, I figured I would have an interesting and unique perspective given I am a cam girl. I also sell, uh, like, I guess amateur porn, but it's like better than amateur. (laughs) And then I basically, I do anything that involves selling stuff on the internet where it's a little sexual. So the thing is her and her boyfriend are fighting about nothing unless this girl is already like super established on social media somewhere, the guys who are offering her $500 to $1,500 for feet pics are lying. (laughs) So essentially her and her boyfriend are fighting about nothing. However, I do want to kind of get into um, the, I don't know, behind the scenes on why this is happening. (laughs) So obviously everyone is aware of the rising popularity in interest in selling feet pics. 
And, you know, since everyone's aware of that, that means the guys interested in the feet pics are aware of that. And they know that a bunch of girls who have no interest in the actual sex work industry are just interested in making a quick buck, which isn't possible in sex work, which I'll be real with you, it's not. You got to work really hard. Um, but they're aware of that. So they know that if they throw out outlandish numbers to these girls, they're going to believe it because that's what they keep hearing from all their friends who know nothing about it. And then these guys might, you know, like end up getting free pictures because these girls might be convinced that they need to send free samples, you know, like, or, you know, they might just be getting off up to the conversation, you know, they might ask you whether what shoe size you wear, whether you like wearing sneakers or ballet flats or heels. And that might just be all they're looking for. And by promising you some large amount of money, they can get a lot of conversation out of you for free. So they are manipulating you and... Like I said in the beginning, unless she already has some huge social media following somewhere, like it's just not real. And the huge social media following is important because that's why people like Kelsey or, you know, potentially like Megan or Melissa could make a ton of money doing it because you already have like an enormous following to market to. And there's an enormous amount of value in someone who's not involved in sex work at all selling them, who is already famous outside of sex work. So that's my just my two cents from a sex worker. Uh, thank you so much. Love the show. Bye. You're amazing. Wow. I love wow. you so much. I think in a different life, I would be a cam girl. Mm. I think I would love that. Not you, now. You never tried it? No, just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think it's an outlander thing. I think if I didn't want, I mean, daily, I wish I didn't want to act because like I hate it and it's terrible and it's like the worst thing ever. But it's also the only thing I like enjoy doing. Mm. Um, I enjoy this podcast, but doing like I, yeah. I, I, if I could choose to like be passionate about something, I would definitely not choose acting. And mm. I like, I think I a hundred percent would feel like I would love that. Cause like, I don't know. There's something like, I think it's like so, yeah, so incredibly empowering and Mm -hmm. so sexy and so Mm -hmm. like female driven and controlled. And it's like, I'm doing my own shit. And like, I, I don't know. I just think like, especially like female doms, I think are so sexy. And Mm -hmm. that whole thing is just so, I don't know. I think it's incredibly empowering. So we would love to hear more about like your cam girl and like your sex work life. I think that's like, so interesting. We, maybe we should I mean, you're yeah. Canadian you said a boot mm-hmm. <laughs> bitch you're far <laughs> um, but no I think this is very this makes me want to sell feet pics yeah but I also respect how she was talking about how much work goes oh, into right. it 100% yeah. and yeah. I think that's something that I it, yeah it's not from because I we've been talking about this for mm-hmm. so long I watched like a 25 minute video of this girl talking about it and she was like mm. it's fucking hard she's like it's like she's like I have to this is like my other part-time job and it's not just because it's enough money that's considered a part-time job she's like it's because it takes the, as much time as a part-time job would and she's mm-hmm. just doing feet pics on the side and so I think like yeah it, it does make sense and we even had some someone talking about it. I don't know if this is it was uh, yeah I don't someone was also talking about it in the Facebook group Mm -hmm. and it was about basically saying like hey these numbers that everyone's projecting that you can make are total bullshit like most of the time people are making like 25 dollars a pick Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day if you're like working your ass off Mm -hmm. you can make great money doing it but like do the math if it's 25 dollars a a pick it is a lot more like work and effort than uh if you're if you're just trying to like especially if you're doing it alone yeah and if you're just trying to make money if it's not something that like oh i want to pursue a career in sex work and all that sort of stuff well, is that all we have for this mm-hmm. episode? Oh my gosh, amazing. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, thank you so much for being on. Plug Thanks. your shit. Where can people find you? Uh, so I am on Big Mood. It's a podcast as well with, it's five girls and we just shoot the shit. We just talk and pretty much have the listener feel as if we're the girl group that they never had. And so that's Big Mood. And I'm also on Just Kidding News where I host this news comedy channel where I present the news and it's a roundtable discussion where we just make fun of whatever is on the news or we just discuss it. And I also have my family channel called Tiffin Case with my husband and my 12-year-old son. And we just do a lot of traveling and stuff. So oh, so fun. Yeah. Now I just need a family so I can have a family channel. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you want to be on an upcoming episode, you can leave us a voicemail at 310-694-0987. You got Why it. did I, I, I like, don't know. blacked <laughs> out? And I was like, is my doing it wrong? Um, and if you're an international listener, you can send us an audio message at meganpodcast at gmail.com. 
And if you want to follow us, our socials will all be listed down below, as well as podcast, Don't Blom Meme Pod. If you guys want to listen ad-free, check us out on Stitcher Premium. We also have the video version on YouTube. And if you're watching the video version, you want to go listen, go listen on any of your various podcast listening devices. Maybe leave, leave a review. Tell us how like cute yeah. we are and how much <laughs> you would buy my feet back for. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Bye. Don't Blame Me is a production by me. Executive produced by Melissa DeMonts. Camera operator Amanda Lechner. And music by Ryan Hunter and Giacomo Picasso. Whatever struggles you're facing from depression and anxiety to trauma and grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, as well as chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it is a truly affordable option. Our listeners even get 10% off your first month with the discount code BLAME. So why not get started? Simply go to betterhelp.com blame and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today.